Welcome to another video from Lockdown Electronics with me Bill and this time we're going to take a look at filters. Now filters are a very common uh, part of electronic circuits. They're pretty much everywhere whether it be radios or hi-fi even computers for that matter and there's lots and lots of different sorts of filters and boy is it a complicated subject. Um, in fact um, one or two of the websites are absolutely stuffed full of mathematics which is enough to put the casual experimenter off um, so hopefully I've not uh, been put off too much and there's almost no maths at all in this video although I will uh, make put some links to websites to help you if you're keen to uh, explore further I think another place that you find a filter is in your, if you've got a VDSL or an ADSL broadband connection, um, either built into the socket on your wall if you're in the UK or as a separate filter, there's actually a little box that separates the, the, the broadband signal from your telephone and actually it's a low pass filter because your telephone just wants the lower frequencies and um, the broadband router modem can uh, just deal with the signal as it stands. So lots of filters everywhere. This time I'm going to take a look at low pass filters. I'm going to look at um, three sorts of passive and one sort of active. So let's start with a bit of filter theory. Filters then, as I said just now, are a very common part of circuits. Uh, you find them pretty much everywhere. There's many, many variations, lots of different sorts, low pass, high pass, band pass, band stop. You find some filters are actually named by the person who, who designed them. That's also that's quite common. Certainly come across that in radio a few times. Uh, passive and active, I guess, are the two main um, variations. Quite often an active circuit is simply um, a passive circuit followed by some kind of amplification to replace the gain that's been lost by passing through the filter. Uh, the concept of orders is just worth um, having a look at. Uh, orders essentially are the amount of attenuation per decade that we get and uh, that will make a bit more sense in a minute when we look how filters are specified. And they use resistors, capacitors, inductors, crystals, ceramic resonators, probably a few other things as well that I haven't mentioned. They tend to be specified usually in terms of a graph, the x-axis being frequency, usually a log scale, and the y-axis being the, the level of, um, well, going down it will be attenuation, and the curve of the filter um, is the bit that uh, gets plotted on there, and the cutoff frequency for the filter is usually specified as what's called the minus 3 dB point or the 3 dB down point. Again, uh, a logarithmic scale obviously being decibels, but three, minus 3 dB is essentially where the signal uh, has reduced by approximately half. We're going to look at, um, first we're going to look at passive low pass filters. We're going to look at three different sorts. Um, two first order ones, one consisting of a resistor and a capacitor another first order consisting of inductor and resistor and then a second order filter that consists of an inductor and a capacitor. So let's make a start by having a look at those three on the bench. Here's the arrangement to look at the low pass filters on the breadboard then. So we've got um, the three filters here uh, RC, LR and LC just set up in order as you've just seen them on the slides uh, they're very simple circuits, resistor, capacitor, inductor, resistor and the inductor and capacitor here. Um, I've just got it um, plugged into the in, uh, inductive resistive um, filter at the moment. The orange lead here comes from the signal generator and the red lead goes to the amplitude input for the uh, scope to produce the boat plots. And I've just got uh, all the grounds connected um, to the minus uh, line along here on the bottom of the breadboard. So I'm going to reposition the camera now so you can see the scope and then we'll um, we'll see what we get. Here's the arrangement to actually plot the curves then. So I've got the uh, oscilloscope set up uh, to produce bowed plots. Uh, in this mode uh, it uh, takes control of the signal generator via uh, USB connected at the back. And then the two outputs of the signal generator are actually worked together. Uh, one of them sends the signal directly to channel one of the scope here through a 50 ohm terminator, uh, and that's uh, to allow the scope to compare the um, phase of the the input to the 
device under test as it will call it and then the second uh, output here goes to the input of the filter and on channel 2 here we've got the um, information uh, coming back in from the other side of the filter so I've got a setup to uh, to scan or to sweep if you like between uh, 10 Hertz and um, I think it's 100 yeah 100 kilohertz so we'll now hop back out there and I'm going to start the run and there's a few little bits of clicking go on while the scope begins to set up the signal generator and eventually it probably isn't terribly clear on this screen but you'll start the signal generator is now um, hopping through frequencies as instructed by the scope and the scope is beginning to um, plot the lines so I'm going to um, speed this up because um, it's very boring And that's the run complete so you can see the first um, two or three decades took a while and it started to speed up such is the nature of, uh, of plotting uh, using a, a logarithmic scale so there's the plot for the um, inductive resistive uh, filter uh, I won't bore you by showing you the other three but we'll have a look at the results now of those three runs Here then are the three uh, filters we've been looking at, um, RC, LR and LC, and here's a screen grab from the scope of the three curves. Now I'm acutely aware that um, it's not easy to compare those um, like that, and because these are screen grabs from the scope it's not terribly easy to overlay them, plus they also uh, consist of the, of the amplitude and the phase uh, curves, and it's the amplitude curve that we're interested in. One rather nice thing about my scope is that I can actually create a table of the 50 measurements and I can export that as a CSV file. So I've taken the three plots and uh, exported them and I've popped them into Excel so we can now look at all three curves as an Excel graph instead. So the blue and the reddy brown curve are the RC and the LR curves there passive first order filters and the LC uh, is a second order filter and you can see straight away uh, a marked difference in the, um, the the speed that the curve begins to descend. So that's um, passive filters first and second order. Let's now move on and have a quick look at just one active filter again a low pass one. So it's a second order filter and here's the circuit involves an op amp and I've omitted the power supply for clarity uh, so essentially what we've got here the two 22k resistors and the two 680 picofarad capacitors are what do the uh, actual filtering um, the rest of the circuit is to do with reining in the ridiculous gain of op amps and I've chosen to use an op amp that I recovered from a, um, a broken video recorder it's just a pair of op amps in a in a single inline case but uh, pretty much any op general purpose op amp would work for this obviously the op amp also has a frequency response which will affect um, the filter in circuit and I'll pop a, a link to a website on so you can see some of the the mathematics behind all this um, but we've essentially got two levels of filter in there so we should expect um, a better performance right let's take a look at that filter on the bench Here's the arrangement on the breadboard for the active low pass filter then. So the op amp here, I did mention earlier, is in a, a single in line 8 pin package. I recovered these from a, an old video recorder so I thought I'd just try them out. It's actually two uh, low noise uh, op amps in a 8 pin package so I'm just using one of them. The two 22k resistors here and the two 680 picofarad capacitors there which to do the main parts of the filtering and there's a few other ancillary parts. Um, Input goes into the um, 
start of the chain there with that 22k ohm resistor via the orange wire from the signal generator and the output comes off um, the output of the op amp there along the red wire back to the scope so let's um, have a look how that plots here we are again looking at the signal generator and the scope attached to the active filter so I'm going to start the run settings are absolutely identical compared to um, previous runs and I'm going to just uh, speed up at this point to allow it to um, plot, plot its information for you And there we have the plot of the active low pass filter as you can see quite a, an abrupt uh, fall away once it approaches the um, the 10 kilohertz uh, mark there so let's have a look at those um, a little bit closer and compare them with the uh, passive filter graphs here's the reminder of the circuit and the curve that we've just plotted for the active low pass filter it's the purple line that's the amplitude um, you can see a very fast fall off right there as we pass through uh, the 10 kilohertz marker but let's take that data import it into the Excel chart that we looked at earlier and see how it compares to the passive filters and as you can see quite a difference I've had to change the vertical scale to accommodate the amount of attenuation produced by the active filter but you can now see fairly clearly that the blue and the brown lines which are the first order passives have a different slope to the grey line which is the second order passive and the second order active is uh, very very different yet again and a much uh, a much more effective uh, filter curve if that's of course what your circuit needs okay well that's it for our look at filters and a very brief one too uh, hopefully it's made a bit of sense uh, I would encourage you to have a look at the websites that I'm going to put down in the description as there are some there's lots of uh, information including uh, one or two online calculators which make working out um, the frequencies you want for your filters a little bit easier and there are so many different sorts of filters I'll probably do another video maybe on on band pass or high pass filters at some point but hopefully that's whetted your appetite and I would encourage you to experiment have a go and see what you can find out i've learned loads when putting this video together so it's been useful for me hope it's been the same for you if it has please click the thumbs up if not you can click the thumbs down either way thanks very much for watching and we look forward to see you on the next video